Okay, so I've been sent some equipment from PyCast who make portable KVMs and these are really impressive pieces of kit. I've already done a little shorts video on this tiny one here and let's have a closer look at that one first of all. So this little tiny device which has a Compute Module 4 inside of it, uh, you can plug any HDMI device into it and you can control that device with mouse and keyboard from another computer. So let's show how that works. So this is my Raspberry Pi 4 which is currently running as a Plex server. So it's got any movies I want to watch or any box sets I want to watch on any TV in the house that's running Plex. Now if I want to control this, you can see there's no mouse or keyboard in it. It's not even running a graphical user interface. Uh, I'm running it from the terminal so that it uses less power. Uh, but what I can do is plug in an HDMI cable and then on the Pi KVM I've got an HDMI input so I can plug the other end into that and then I can plug in a USB cable and this is basically going to give me mouse and keyboard control so if I then plug that into any of the sockets on here USB 2 is fine and the last bit I need to do is plug in a USB-C to USB-C cable into my MacBook now that the PiCast has started up, it's going to give me an IP address, 192.168.2.1. Okay, so now if I go to a web browser and type in that IP address, 192.168.2.1, go to advanced and proceed. And type in my password, which is admin and admin at the moment. Obviously, it's worth changing that. And you can see here we've got a menu. We can go into terminal, which is to control the Pi KVM, which is the little Pi cast device, or we can go to KVM to see what's connected to the HDMI socket. You can now see it's booted up and I can go full screen and uh, I can start the graphical user interface. This is, well, if I run NeoFetch, so NeoFetch isn't installed in this, but if I do sudo apt install NeoFetch is nice and responsive, very, very snappy. Feels much better than running it over a network. Uh, so let's say yes to that. So you can see I've got control of that. Uh, we'll also, once this is installed, we'll start this up as well. So let's run NeoFetch just to show what we're running. And let's run start X to run a graphical user interface. So this is all running from my Pi but being sent to the MacBook over the USB-C cable. Here we go, so now we've got a graphical user interface. So now if I press the command key, that will open up and I can type Plex and that will launch my Plex server so I can have a look at that. So now I can do whatever housekeeping I want. Say for instance, to scan library files to see if there's any new videos added. And when I've finished, I can just unplug it. Obviously I can do all this over a network, but my Compute Module 4 isn't a Wi-Fi model, so I need to make an adjustment on the PiCast because at the moment it's set up for local, so just USB-C going into the computer. So it works the same on my iPad, so if I put in that IP address and hit return, you can see that it's logged me in, KVM, and then it will start up, and I can basically move around. I've got a cursor on here. There's various different ways you can set up the mouse and keyboard. You can also plug in a mouse and keyboard as well. So if I went for say accessories and imager and that will boot up and everything works just as it would on a Raspberry Pi. But what else can we get to work? Here's my little Melee Mini PC uh, which is running Windows 11. Uh, this is the power cable for the device. HDMI going into the PiCast. And then we've also got the USB, which is going to give us mouse and keyboard control from this little mini PC. I've already launched the web browser, so let's select KVM. And the Windows device shows up, and I can log in, and it's running normal Windows. And again, nice and responsive, uh, very, very easy to use. Uh, if I, say for instance, start up the web browser, and go to YouTube, and it starts playing nice and quick and it looks lovely and smooth. So let's go a bit closer so you can see that. Orange Pi 5 Plus running OpenFied on my MacBook. So if I click on the apps and launch COG, it comes up super, super fast. Let's minimize that, go into the settings and uh, yeah, it just feels like it's natively running. 
So what about my compact laptop? Windows XP or Windows 98? Let's go 98. I'm not sure how this is going to work on the video output. Uh, because this doesn't have HDMI out, I'm using a phono output to an AVI converter, which I haven't plugged in to power yet, so that's not going to work until I've plugged in a little mini USB, which I'm going to have to find. And has it worked? Of course it has. I'll go into screen capture just to show you how bad it looks. Unfortunately, the mouse keyboard doesn't seem to work. Uh, I'm just going to try XP because that had better USB support. So let's just shut this down. And OK. And that's just booting up again. Let's go with Windows XP this time. And it doesn't look like I've got mouse control on this either. You can see the cursor in the middle is not moving. And you can see an error that comes up on the top here, Raspberry Pi's health is at risk. Uh, this is because you are supposed to plug in separate power into the Pi KVM, but I've been using it without. But uh, you are supposed to uh, power it separately. So Pi KVM, let's go out of that, go into terminal and let's shut this down. So this is the Pi KVM software. So if I do su dash and the password is root, and then I can do sudo shutdown dash h now and that'll shut it down and the fans come on for the first time while it's shutting down but it hasn't needed it at any point throughout and that's obviously just because it's shutting down that it's come on so I didn't want to give up with old windows so this is a Raspberry Pi 4 running Dospian and again it's going through the PiCast and this time the keyboard is recognized. And I can't remember how to do this, but let's give this a try. Oh yeah, starting Windows 95. And I have mouse control, so if I hit start, you can see here, I don't think I've really got anything on here. I've got Elastomania on here. Let's give that a try. Oh no, I didn't manage to install it on that install then. But as you can see, it's working. Let's just shut it down so we can see the uh, classic shutdown screen. It's now safe to turn off your computer. Okay, so let's have a look at connectivity. Uh, so on the front, we've got an HDMI socket. You've already seen the OLED screen lit up. Then on the side, we've got HDMI 1 and HDMI input. You can actually plug this directly into a monitor to control it and access all the Pi KVM operating system and everything. USB emulation, which is the one which controls mouse and keyboard on another device. Got a little Kensington lock there. And we've got power and USB 3 Ethernet and also a little SD card slot. And on the bottom, we've got all these dip switches, which enable you to use things like Pi Boot without them to take it out of the case. Uh, and we can also change the Ethernet. So rather than being the USB Ethernet direct to a MacBook or an iPad or another device, you can direct the Ethernet to be on a network. So I'm going to enable that and I'm also going to put it in this case and have a look at it. So let's open it up and that comes apart and you can see inside we've got a PVM controlled fan and uh, a nice big heat sink in there as well. But as I say, it was cool enough and this didn't come on in the operation. So it didn't need it. So I can unscrew this heat sink. And the heatsink, as it came, had all these little thermal pads on it. Uh, obviously, thermal paste is more effective, but they've been perfectly fine in this case. I then need to take out the OLED display so I can get access to the screws to take it out of this casing. So I can move that out of the way, unscrew this from the bottom here, and tease it out of its case. And we've got eight screws to take out of this one. So... Let's take this bit off first. Okay, so that's all coming out. You can see there's an adapter to go on the hats. We've got a little ribbon cable here as well. But let's pop the board in first of all. So we must have to take all of this out. Okay, that comes out nice and easy. So the heat sink's gonna have to come off. And let's pop that in. And hopefully the display just slots in there as well. So let's screw the display back in. 
pop three of these back in. Okay, so the hat's going to go like that. So the ribbon's going to go into here. Yeah, that's gone in. And let's clamp that down. And what I haven't done is taken the tape off the dip switches. So I wonder if I can get that off with a knife. Yeah, let's come out. Okay, that's the last screw. So obviously the hat has given us a USB serial at the top here. And then Ethernet, ATX and console. And the ATX is what works with this board. Uh, and this board, obviously this is for mini PCs and for full size cases. And that allows you to actually turn on and off the device. So even to be able to go into the BIOS, uh, you can use this device, which is very cool. Okay, so when I go to the download section on the site, unfortunately the one for the Ethernet hat isn't there yet. I have been told it will be up soon. Uh, and I've also got instructions on how to convert the image I've got, but I've definitely run out of time today. Uh, so if we go back to the PiCast website, we can see PiCast overview. PiCast is a portable Raspberry Pi KVM over IP device that allows you to manage servers or workstations remotely, whatever the state of the operating system or whether one is installed. It also allows you to turn off or restart a computer, configure the UEFI stroke BIOS, and even reinstall the operating system using virtual CD-ROM or flash drive. And you can see the various different devices. Uh, so the two that I've got is this one, the PiCast and the PiCast with the hat. Uh, but there's also one with the USB 3. Uh, and there's variations. So this PiCast switcher will allow you to have two devices connected to it. Uh, and then we've got this PiCast, which is USB baseboard and PiCast hat and USB baseboard and KVM switcher. As you can see here, support for 1920 by 1080 power over ethernet, which is what my board has. Uh, so basically the device can be powered from the ethernet connection. Obviously you need a power over ethernet router to support that, which I do have. There's also a crowd supply website if you wanna get a hold of one of these early. And if we scroll down through, all the specs and everything are in there. There's some nice close-ups of the boards and everything if you wanna check that out. So I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.